Welcome back everyone, let's go ahead and talk about the iPhone 12 and see basically how this thing has held up for the last 3 months. Now first of all the main thing I want to hit on is pretty much the price tag. This thing has depreciated just a little bit in the used market. On eBay they're going around 800, actually less than 800 because it costs seven, over $800 to pick up. But I've seen it you know, kind of go down to about that $750, $700 price range for a couple of models. But they're still roughly around $750 you know, in the used market. So if you want to buy the cheapest ones that I find, links will be down in the description. You can also get them from cheapphones.co, which is my website. All those links will be down below. You can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now, what I can tell you pretty much about this device is that not a lot has changed on one area, but on the flip side, a lot has also changed. You know, when this phone originally came out, we were kind of stuck in this little area where my main mindset was the price tag increase because going from the iPhone 11 to the iPhone 12, there was that price increase, which I was very saddened about. But since then, we've seen, you know, a lot of news about the iPhone 12 mini pretty much going away, which makes the iPhone 13 or iPhone 12s. Maybe that'll also go down in the used market in terms of price tag. I'm not too sure, but we'll kind of see what happens there. With this specific device, though, I've been using it so much for my second channel videos and even for these main channel videos. Anytime I talk about new iOS versions or anything like that, I typically use this device or any tutorials. And this phone, luckily for me, has handled everything I've ever wanted to throw at it perfectly fine. Nothing crazy has happened. And even when it first came out, there weren't any crazy software features that I was messing up on my iPhone 12. I kind of use it as a secondary main device, but things, you know, that were real issues were the iMessage notifications not coming out. But since then, that has been fixed for the most part. There have still been a couple of complaints, but I would say about 99% of them by iOS 14.4 are pretty much fixed for the most part. So that's really good. The stability aspect is still there, which is really nice. There hasn't really been a crazy, crazy, you know, defect other than the screen issue that was still being, you know, held in the early on when the iPhone 12 first came out, but it does look like that's still being in effect. So if you don't have to, maybe it's kind of waiting until Apple, you know, puts out a recall program of some sort, which I think they've already done for some iPhone 12s. So if you're experiencing those type of issues, I would recommend contacting Apple and getting it fixed. The body is still holding up extremely well. Nothing crazy has happened for my specific iPhone 12, which is great. I am able to notice though that the display is just a little bit of, just seems like lesser quality than my iPhone 12 Pro, which is very strange. But as long as you're not comparing them side by side, it's not a big deal. We've also since gotten the Samsung Galaxy S21. And funny enough, this phone I think is an overall better phone and probably, you know, overall than the Galaxy S21. But I will tell you the Galaxy S21 still has a lot of features that the iPhone 12 doesn't have. I wish this phone had a fingerprint sensor in the display or maybe a higher refresh rate, but even the refresh rate, save those for the pro models, I understand. But even if this thing had Touch ID, that would have been a really cool and awesome thing too. Unfortunately, it doesn't have it, so there's really nothing we can do about it in that sense. But really, the software features and everything that were added since then have been great. I haven't really had too many complaints about it since then. And I really, everything that I hit on on my early on review of this thing, probably like two or three weeks after I did all those comparisons, are still the same things that I would say here. You know, I would say if you're coming from a super old iPhone, this is still a very good stable device for the most part. I really haven't had any crazy issues as of right now, as of probably within the last month. But if you're coming from something like an iPhone 11, an iPhone 10R, or an iPhone 10S, or even an iPhone 10, I would probably recommend keeping those devices until maybe the iPhone 13 comes out because it's looking like that device is going to be that humongous change. That thing is supposed to bring a lot of crazy things to it. So I'd probably recommend waiting out till then, but but other than that, I have a thumbs up for this device and I actually do think it's pretty much still worth it and I really don't have any complaints about it so far. So that pretty much covers it up. Like I stated, if you want to pick it up, links will be down in the description or you can buy it at cheapphones.co, you prefer. You can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Hit the like button if you guys enjoyed the video, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So me so much if you guys get hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my other channels. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.